Hey guys, welcome back again to Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy where the proof is in the singing. We got a lot of requests for this one and that is, Ken, I think I might have a node or a nodule or a polyp on my vocal cords. What do I do? Well, the first thing that you do is you go to a quality expert licensed healthcare practitioner such as an otolaryngologist or an ENT where they can strobe your vocal folds and take a look at what's going on to help give you a roadmap for the path of the greatest success for healing for your vocal folds. That's what you do. What you don't do is you don't go to some Yahoo on the internet who grabs and cuts and pastes something and reposts and regurgitates something on his channel in order to make himself look good, who has no background, no expertise, no proof of anything that he's saying. You want to go to a quality, licensed healthcare practitioner that has decades, hopefully, of experience on this subject. That's the very, very first thing you do. Okay, Ken, but wait, what qualifies you to tell me what I should do? I'm glad you asked. I didn't say that I'm giving you this information via Ken Tamplin. I'm saying I'm giving you information to go to a qualified healthcare practitioner to get good qualified information. Now I can give you my experience and I want to share some things with you of what I know from 30 years of singing. I've never sung better. I don't lose my voice and I prove this with my own voice and my students' voices on what it takes to make you a great singer. In fact, I cover all of this in my singing course called How to Sing Better Than Anyone Else and I walk you through all of this stuff to help equip you so they can give you the best tools and the best arsenal to make you the best singer that you can be and to get healing from this stuff. Okay, the first thing is, what is the difference between a polyp and a node? And there's other things, there's vocal cord cysts, there's lesions, and I'm not gonna get, take the time to go through all this stuff, I'm just gonna break some stuff down really simply. The first thing is, a difference between a vocal node and a polyp is that the polyp is like a blister on your finger. Now I'm a guitar player and getting a blister on your finger is kind of a bummer, uh, but you play through it and eventually you hope, as a, as a guitar player, you hope to get um, a callus on your finger so that you can play more guitar and you don't have to worry about you know uh, uh, it hurting when you go to play. Well, for the vocal cords, that's not what you want because when you get a polyp or a blister and it turns into a nodule or a node, it becomes hard. And when you have your vocal folds, which kind of look like a V-shape and they go to close down and you're looking to get good phonation or sound, when you can't get phonation, there's a break in that sound somewhere along the lines of the vocal folds, which can happen with a polyp or a node. But the difference between a polyp and a node is once you get a node or a callus, you're going to need some way to get rid of that because it's, it's, it's become so hard that you get what's something called dysphonia or the lack of sound. You can't get phonation. Think of taking a reed of grass and going, right? And then, and then all of a sudden you can't get sound out of that. Now, um, polyps are kind of funky because they're, they're, they're kind of stems that come in and out of the, of the vocal folds themselves. And you, people can go through their life and they can get all kinds of polyps that can come up and down and you, uh, you can reduce those in lots of different ways um, and never necessarily have to go to surgery. And by the way, we don't want to go straight to surgery and I want to talk to you about that. This is really important and a really good ENT or an otolaryngologist will tell you this. Don't go straight to surgery. That's silly. There's lots of ways that we can correct this. But let's get back to the polyp. So the polyp is a cyst. And if the cyst breaks and the skin breaks and it kind of reheals and there's lots of things. By the way, you'll know you'll know how this is is happening in your throat uh, if you get vocal fatigue, where you're kind of talking and you kind of just sound like you're hoarse all the time. You know, or you or you fatigue quickly when you sing. That's one thing. Another thing is an unreliable voice, like um, you know, um, hey, you know, I'm doing uh, pretty good. Like you know, you it's not you can't count on your voice. Uh, another thing is a delayed vocal initiation. So if I go. Hey, how's it going? You know, so like I'm kind of leaning, leaning into a sound and I don't get phonation there. Uh, or a low gravelly voice. Hey, what's going on? You know, there's different people, especially speakers and pastors that scream or rock singers that scream, right? Or your vocal goes into a low pitch. Hey, 
I'm going here, and I can't get up, and I can't get up here, because when I go, I'll, I lose phonation. Um, or the voice breaks in certain passages of sentences, or not just sentences, but also places in the chord when you sing. So um, as you go up in a scale, they would break at a certain point. So if I go, hey, and I can't get phonation, or I lose my voice and the sound of my voice altogether up top. So, or an airy, breathy voice. Uh, I'm always talking like this. I don't know why. Blah, 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 blah. Right? Or I have to sing in a small voice because I can't project, because I can't get good chord closure. Or an increased effort when I want to go speak, I have to really lean into the sound and I got to kind of hit it really hard. Or um, I have hoarseness in the voice and it's rough and gravelly when I speak, no matter what I do. Or frequency of throat clearing. <clears throat> I'm always doing this, or uh, there's I have to um, sing or speak really loudly, so I can't speak at this volume, or I can't speak at this volume clearly. I have to kind of shout and you know maintain a lot of phonation or a lot of pressure to get that sound. Now, we have vocal folds that have can have polyps, cysts, nodes, which are calluses lesions which actually kind of go along the folds themselves and I don't get time to get into all this we could have benign legions or we can also have legions that are cancerous I can't take the time to discuss this but I'm going to refer you to someone that can um, and then also um, if we have uh, benign vocal fold lesions how those develop into different things where we lose dysphonia or we get dysphonia excuse me we lose good for uh, vocal closure okay now there's some exercises that we can do I know, like I said, in my singing course, I have something called It's the La A. Refer to this in my How to Sing Better Than Anyone Else course. We want to determine what, where, what's happening in the, in the folds themselves and where you're losing the closure. This is really important because we don't want to go straight to surgery and we don't want to just go, okay, you know, hey doctor, my doctor says, hey, cut it out. So he did, right? No, don't cut it out. Like, let's rehabilitate this in a healthy way first and then we can move on to, if you need that kind of consultation, you can go to a quality licensed healthcare practitioner that will give you good advice or go to them first and say, hey, vocal rest. Like there's, okay, so there's several things. You know, we can go through vocal rest. We can go through um, a hydration rehabilitation. Uh, there's something called glutathione and you can do glutathione treatment. So it used to be that you do it intravenously. Look it up online, glutathione. There's some controversy over glutathione. But I'm telling you, in fact, the people that are in the know, uh, you can now take it orally and you can have glutathione that can reduce swelling of cysts and, and actually even rehabilitate lesions and also in some cases put enough softness in the tissue for vocal nodes themselves. Now, by the way, let's talk about nodes. Nodes doesn't mean that because you have a node that you can't speak or sing. If you take a singer like Brian Adams or you take a singer that, you know, that has got a really gravelly voice, they actually have nodes and whether they got them naturally or whether uh, it was built up over time, you know, whatever, you can kind of use that to your advantage. Let me explain to you what I mean. I'm sure I've had my uh, cords strobed a half dozen times over the years. And if I go, hey, okay, I'm super clean on the sound. I can even be cleaner. Hey, now I can also lean into that sound. kind of dirty up the voice a little bit to get some grovel, which was a tone that we all love, right? Hey! Right? Well, this depends on how much compression I'm able to use of air. Now, let me get to air because this is also really important. The overuse of air is the enemy to the vocal folds. Now, I saw one coach post online recently, you know, you don't do this sound because it'll kill your voice. Well, Hey, you know, there's a lot of people doing extreme sports out there and they like extreme sounds and they like to distort their voice. I'm not saying it's the optimal thing for your voice at all, but what I am saying is, and we are distressing the chord, but what I am saying is that we can get this sound safely if we know how to do it. I've been doing it for 30 some odd, 35 years, 40 records later, a thousand songs placed in film and TV, hundreds of vocal students that are also doing this safely. The proof is in the singing, in my vocal course, how to sing better than anyone else. I cover all of this stuff, how we can compress this air safely and build up the sound. Now, if you listen to an Aretha Franklin when she was really young, 
She had almost no vocal distortion at all. And you listen to her in her older years, and she's got this gorgeous, round, harmonic distortion that comes in for a beautiful, sexy sound. So we shouldn't say, we should never have that sound. We should say, how can we get that sound safely, or how can we maintain good vocal health over time? Okay, so with that said, um, I wanna get back to a diagnosis of what we do for lesions or if we think we have. Now, there's one more thing, nerve damage to the vocal folds themselves. That's very, very rare, and it can happen. I'll try to do a, a, a tutorial on that as well. That's an animal unto itself, and that's a, has a different outcome for that. But polyps, nodes, lesions, reactive vocal lesions, vocal cord cysts, all of them can be dealt with in different ways. So in a case of a cyst, we don't run to surgery. We rehabilitate. There's different things that we could do when we talk. A nice, bright, timbral sound. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Not the use or the overuse of air. Mitigate the air, control the air, so that when you do this, you can build the folds back, you know, back up. Vocal nodules themselves are a little more extreme because now you have a callus and now you've got to be able to find some resiliency and moisture and elasticity to put that back in the cord. So we have to rehabilitate that, like I said, glutathione treatments. Now, not all vocal nodules or cysts or polyps or lesions come from the overuse of air or screaming or yelling or singing incorrectly. Some of them come from things like acid reflux or silent acid reflux, not just GERD and the, the, the mainstream ones, but silent acid reflux where you don't even know you have it. In the middle of the night, you've got acid that's going up into the larynx and it's gnawing away at the larynx with this acid, chewing away at your vocal folds, okay? Or chronic sinusitis or even allergies or the constant clearing of your throat. There's lots of different things. Now, I don't have time to cover the acid reflux part of this now, just know that it exists and I'm gonna do a whole tutorial on acid reflux to help you guys understand that. Um, I am gonna cover really quickly the sinus part of this because it is con in conjunction with some of the other stuff I wanna talk about, um, about inflammation and some other things. Now, sinusitis or you know constant sinus dripping down into the vocal folds and cords themselves, can be dealt with with some really cool stuff like ozone treatments. Look this up, ozone treatments, where ozone can come in and actually heal the sinus cavity. Now there's some controversy and some people say, you know, it's bad and some people say it's awesome. Some people claim it cures cancer. I'm not going down that road. I just know that it really can help the sinuses themselves but you're actually releasing also toxins into the body. So it's really important to have something else that gets rid of the toxins in the body, something like a foot ion foot bath or something where it sucks the toxins out of the body. You've got to find what's good for you, but you can't um, you know, expect to go in and try to get rid of, to uh, you know, get, ask the toxins to leave if there's no way to expunge or expel or get to get the, rid of this out of the body. So that's really important. Um, so chronic sinusitis and some other things and allergies play a big role in this. Now I have a whole thing on how to get rid of mucus on the cords. Look at my vid video tutorial on that because I cover allergies and all that stuff and that, that will really help you guys that just have chronic sinusitis to help get rid of that stuff. So in the end, treatment, glutathione treatment is just, again, I can't emphasize this enough because it used to be in glutathione treatment that you could kind of only do this intravenously and now there's an oral thing that you can take for glutathione. By the way, your body creates glutathione also. So it's a natural occurring element in the body. It's not something foreign. Um, and then uh, one more thing, if you need to go to an ENT or if you need to go to an otolaryngologist, make sure you go to a good one. Now, I'm gonna give you a guy that is one of the gnarliest guys on planet Earth. His name is Steven Zytels. I've worked with him with many patients on a lot of stuff. And he is the guy that did the surgery for Steven Tyler. Uh, he did, um, who else? Uh, Keith Urban. He did Cher, Lionel Richie, Paul Stanley. Um, uh, Julie Andrews, Christina, uh, Christina Perry, James Taylor, John Mayer, uh, the CEO of Google, like all these different guys. He's literally an artist. And he's not interested in 
cutting the vocal folds. He's got a laser technology where he's actually able to just shave off just enough of what needs to be shaved off and then you go back into rehabilitation to build up the folds themselves. I'm gonna post his information here. You can check him out. I can't recommend him more highly. Uh, I think he did Adele's surgery. He might have even done Sam Smith's too, but uh, don't quote me on that, on that either of those. But uh, just one of the great otolaryngologists in the world at the very cutting edge of technology. And I pride myself on looking to see who's the latest, greatest, and what cool things are going on. So anyway, guys, I hope this helped you. Uh, again, the proof is in the singing. Don't trust Ken Tamplin. Don't trust some Yahoo repost stuff on the internet. Go to your quality licensed healthcare practitioner. Ask them their advice to give you the direction for the best roadmap for your good vocal health. Thank you for joining me. Ken Templin Vocal Academy, where the proof is in the singing. Vo